But there is one they fear. In their tongue, he is Duvakin. Dragonborn! Good day to you and welcome to a brand new Let's Play! Do I really need to say what this is? I mean, I know there's no great big logo on the screen blatantly declaring what the game is called, but unless you've been living under a rock for the last two or three years, you should have a fair idea that this is, in fact, the masterpiece, which is The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Fred of Asgarnia here, your host as always, and today I'm going to be making, I suppose, what is my first foray on camera into, Tam into the realm of Tamriel. So, uh, for the uninitiated, and I pray that there are very few of you, because if you are uninitiated then I don't know how I could possibly condense everything into about two minutes, but The Elder Scrolls uh, is uh, basically a fantasy series, fantasy action RPG series developed by Bethesda, Probably one of the few, I think, major independent gaming companies these days. As in, one that produces its own games without another license. And thus, it's the quality of its games tends to be quite exceptional. I could be wrong on that last statement, but anyway, they are definitely exceptional. It's created five Elder Scrolls titles, the most recent three being Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim, each of which, again, are set within different parts of a continent known as Tamriel. Or, well, world, actually, universe called Tamriel. So, basically, this installment, Elder Scrolls V, is set in the northern province of Tamriel, Skyrim. Uh, you create your character and you... That's the thing! You can do whatever the hell you like! This is the archetypal fantasy game. You've got magic, dual-wielding swords and magic, dragons, and, most of all, you can even have a beard! It's got everything! If you don't do it for the dragons, then do it for the beards! Basically, that's it. Uh, I'm going to be role-playing this, so I'm going to create a character, and I'm going to follow his story and uh, his character traits as much as possible. That means I'm going to be basically ruling out certain skill sets from the get-go. After all, I don't want my... I don't want your... Why, why would a knight in shining armor go around killing people and picking pockets? That's just completely out of character. So, we're going to try and follow that as much as possible. Furthermore, uh, what is it? Yes. I'm going to be... Although it's not that I haven't got any mods installed that actually force me to, I'm going to be eating, drinking, and sleeping at regular intervals. As well, if I'm making armor, I might spend time, maybe an hour or so, might, you know, wait an hour, and of course that simulates the time it would take to fix the armor. So I'm going to try and roleplay it as much as possible. And thirdly, I do have a couple of mods installed. There are no major overhaul mods, there's just a few slight graphic graphical improvements I've put in. Uh, a couple of just mods to make uh, the game feel... Basically to make me feel more connected with the world, because although Skyrim, it's immersion, the immersion factor is pretty strong in a lot of the Elder Scrolls games. But there are just a couple of different factors that, you know, are tweaked with the mods that make them a lot better. And that is the advantage of the PC Master Race. Mods, and lots of them. Now, without further ado, I'm just going to load up a save. What I've done is here, I've played a little bit of the game, and what I've done is I've actually gone so far as to, um... I've gone so far as to go through the tutorial mission and create my character. So, that's pretty good. It means we don't, have to, we don't have to do that tutorial mission that everybody did. So, and now I'm just going to explain my character's backstory, before we go any further. During the time period in which Skyrim is set, the Blades, that is the Emperor's bodyguard, have been outlawed by the Thalmor. Now, for the uninitiated, the Thalmor are a group of elven Nazis. They're uh, elven supremacists, and uh, yeah. If you could ever, if you want to think of them, they're Tamriel's equivalent of the KKK. Only they're bent towards exterminating humans and anything that isn't elvish and have pointy ears. So Spock would probably be okay. But uh, yeah, the blades were banned as a result of the Great War between, I believe it was the Empire and, of course, the Elves. So the blades were banned as a result of this. My character is an ex-blade who was forced into hiding with the Thalmor and have been on the run ever since. Now, however. After an attempted assassination, or he was actually incarcerated, he was uh, he was incarcerated with the Thalmor, but he managed to escape, and had been basically dodging Thalmor high 
hired, hired blades for years. Though, so then, fleeing from Cyrodiil, he crossed the border into Skyrim, only to run into an ambush from General Tullius and the, the Empire. Because Skyrim is in, currently embroiled in a civil war between the Empire, led by General Tullius, and the Stormcloaks, a rebel faction that seek to uh, fight for Skyrim's independence. Now, my character has just bumbled into the middle of an ambush that has seen Ulfric Stormcloak, leader of the rebellion, captured. But that, of course, means that my character has been indicted with of treason. Because, of course, the Empire think that I'm also a rebel. Of course I'm not a rebel. I wasn't wearing bloody bear helmets. I didn't have a bear helm helmet as my helmet. I didn't have a bear head as my helmet. How could I possibly be a rebel? So, yeah, across the border, got ambushed by the Imperials, who threatened to take my head off. However, Fair Fortune uh, interceded on my behalf in the form of Alduin, destroyer of the worlds, a great big dragon that set fire to Helgen and plunged Skyrim into a thousand year darkness. Yes, the dragons returned to Skyrim. It just so happened that that return happened to save my arse. So now, my character has just escaped from the ruins of Helgen and uh, has followed the Imperial Legion because, you know, as an X-Blade, he did give his life and blood for the Empire. So, I know a lot of you would question, why would you escape Helgen with... Helgen, by the way, is the city uh, that the dragon attacked. Why would you escape Helgen with the Empire? Well, this is why. My character was an Imperial Loyalist. He fought for the Empire, he gave his blood and his life for the Empire. So, why wouldn't he? It just doesn't make any sense that he'd do that. I, I, I don't think. That's just the way my character's mind works. And I wrote the character, so don't question me. Oh, I love being an autocrat. Alright, so, that's all of that done. I'll let you skip all of that. I'll put a little link in the description, not in the description, but I'll put an annotation on the screen. And you can skip as you want to. So, without further ado, tally-ho! Let's go. Sleeping in a bed applies the rested bonus. I personally prefer to sleep in your mom's bed. What? What the fuck? Who wrote this? Somebody sacked the- Oh, sorry, that was a mod. <laughs> he prefers to sleep in my mom's bed. You Wait. bastard. Oh, shit. Dragon. Who we Looks is hiding like behind the tree line? This time. But I don't think we should stick around to see if he comes back. Really, Hadvar. This is my good friend Hadvar, the man who helped me escape from certain death. Although, admittedly, he almost condemned me to certain death as well. But that's neither here nor there. I'm willing to overlook that. That was an oversight, a travesty. Okay, so here we are. My uncle's the blacksmith there. I'm sure he'd help you out. So. Well, it's probably best if we split up. No. Good luck. I wouldn't have made it without your help today. You'll never know what happens in the, what happened in there. But anyway, so uh, I'm going to follow him because uh, if you don't, he does this. So I better follow him. My character has never been to Skyrim, but he knows that as a blade, Skyrim was the heartland of the Akaviri. In that this is this is where they entered the world. They entered. Um, they entered the continent of Tamriel via uh, Skyrim, as far as I know. Okay, look, you know what, never mind. I'm not going to follow you. I'd be here all day. Listen, should go to solitude and join up with the Imperial Legion. I want a bit of quiet. Really of course I'm going to solitude. If the rebels have themselves a dragon, General Tullius is the only one who can stop them. Now, General Tullius is the Imperial Governor, but I respect that he's a fine strategist. But if the rebels have a, a dragon that can rain fire and death upon an entire civilization without as much as beating a dragon lash, I'm not entirely sure how one man like General Tullius, with a thousand swords at his back, could possibly stop that. Stop that. It just doesn't seem feasible. But I digress. Now, my character is quite a worldly man. He knows quite a bit about. Oh, yeah, didn't show. I didn't show him to you. Yeah, as you can see, he's been in the wars. Uh, scars in his face, blind in his left eye. Yeah, he's uh, he's seen some shit. Just a lot less of it, given since he lost his eye. But that's neither here nor there. So, he's quite a worldly man. He's honourable. He tries to do the right thing. But he's not above stepping on toes to get the job done. Furthermore, he's also... Uh, well, how did you get here so fast? You're like the Slender Man. 
He's quite worldly, so he knows a little bit about potion making, which is handy, because it means that you can make potions to heal yourself. I'm going to be a consummate warrior for the most part, which is good, I think. I might do a bit of the main quest, might, because the restoration of the blades does have something to do with that. We start building them up again. But at the same time, I'm thinking of doing the Imperial Legion quest, because I think as a man of the, uh... Well, as a ex-member of the Imperial, or, you know, as a loyalist to the Empire, I think he would feel it his duty to pitch in and help out. But sure, we'll see how that goes. I play this for the experience, really. It's been a very long time. Blue Mountain Flowers, by the way, great for healing potions. Just, uh, just a heads up. That's worth remembering. But, um, yeah, so, I came... See that ruin up there? Ugh. Bleak Falls Barrow. When I was a boy, that place always used to give me nightmares. Draugr creeping down the mountain to climb through... Zombies, the by the way, that's another thing this game has. I admit, I still don't much like the look of it. Nobody could blame you, the place is horrible. Whoever had, a, whoever had a hand in decorating the place obviously died 2,000 years ago. It's a bit dated, even even as far as tombs are concerned. And I've seen some tombs. They're pretty... I play, I play Lara, I play Tomb Raider. The original. So I've seen some tombs. The home decor is a little bit out. But anyway, I digress. As you can see, I've done a few graphical improvement mods. I've put a few of them in. And this just looks gorgeous. Pure water and pure landscapes. So... I mean, Skyrim in its own right looks phenomenal, but... These are the Guardian Stones. Three of the thirteen ancient standing stones that dot Skyrim's landscape. Go ahead, see for yourself. Right, now, this is worth noting. Uh, I'll explain some features as we go on, but these Guardian Stones, by invoking their ancient magic, you actually gain certain buffs and bonuses. For example, if I were a, uh, a mage, I'd use this Mage Stone. And as a result, while I'm uh, imbued with the power of the Mage Stone, I will learn all of my magic skills 20% faster. It's basically, uh, it's basically like going to Hogwarts. Only there's less, uh, there's not quite the same chance of getting injured every year. Seriously. Who sends kids to a magic school where Voldemort's ro running around? It's crazy. But I'm going to take the Warrior Stone because that's a 20% buff to all combat skills. I knew you shouldn't have been on that cult the minute I laid eyes on you. Well, I was hardly going to pick Thief in front of you, especially considering that I claimed I was innocent. Anyway, let's move on. I don't really want to have anything to do with you now. So, Skyrim. The reason I came around to playing this Let's Play for the uh, the regulars of my channel, it's quite simply because a good friend of mine, Leo J24, happened to be playing it on his Xbox when I wandered over that when I wandered over to his house about a week ago. Right, you're listening to me. But it's a bit unlikely. I mean, wasn't I? I wasn't even. I wasn't even on the on the list to be executed. So I'm not really sure anybody'd care. I'd probably just blend in. But anyway, he happened to be playing on his Xbox on his Xbox when I. Oh shit! Find you! I. Oh god, wolves! This is another thing in Skyrim. Expect lots of wolves. Right, dead wolves. Lovely. Expect arachnids as well. Okay, a garnet. I don't know how you wound up with a semi-precious stone, but alright, I'll have it. Another wolf pelt, you never know. Pelts can be useful. But he was playing it in his Xbox, I happened to wander by, and uh, I was just overcome with nostalgia. So I just had to play it. Had to reinstall it. I even bought Dawnguard the other day, so I'm really getting back into it. Uh, seriously, I was half crying with just pure nostalgia. Well, that's great, Hadvar, that's great. We're going to meet up with his uncle. There's another thing I want to draw attention to. It's a water mod I installed called Pure Water. It really, I think, the water in Skyrim looked pretty anyway, but this, I just... I just think it adds to it. I think it makes it look even better than it already was. Just worth noting. Okay, let's see then. Here is Riverwood, and oh my fucking immersion. I'm so sorry. Ignore that completely. It was a mod I put in. Originally, I was this character was supposed to be a samurai sort of character that teleported from Japan. Don't ask me how that one works. But it's basically an Akaviri samurai dojo. If you want me to take a look at it, I will do it someday, but not now. I've already almost cancelled this Let's Play, Let's Play twice. I don't intend to do it again. 
So, here we are at Riverwood. this uh, he's a well he saved my life in fact come on I'll explain everything but we need to go inside okay okay come inside then Sigrid will get you something to eat and you can tell me all about it hey ah oh, Christ what? what is it now mother it was as big as the mountain and black as night it, it flew right over the barrel oh Dragon's hush hush crazy woman if you keep on like this, everyone in town will think you're crazy. The way you're talking, I already I think most people do you think she's a few screws loose. Right, but that's neither here nor there. No, stop being so melodramatic, woman. Dragons level with the main character, they couldn't kill anything. No, no, no. As it was written as a satirical German pamphlet, during the uh, war in Russia once said when you're at home on leave try the roundy thing on the door first don't use a grenade to unlock the door unless you're desperate ay 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 and that's uh, true actually that was actually in a pamphlet I was reading it last night it was very amusing well someone's been ooting a boot in the hoose with the moose Alright, uh, so I can steal all this stuff, but I'm not really in the mind to do that just yet. We've been so worried about you. Come, you two must be hungry. Sit down and I'll get you something to eat. Oh, thank you. Now then, boy, what's the big mystery? What are you doing here looking like you lost an argument with a cave bear? <laughs> I don't know where to start. I lost that about you ten years ago. Yeah, I went, but... We were stopped in Helgen when we were attacked. By a dragon. What? A dragon? That's ridiculous. You aren't drunk, are you, boy? Husband, let him tell his story. But where are you? Oh, you're... Not Honey. much more to tell. This dragon flew over and just wrecked the whole place. Mass confusion. I don't know if anyone else got out alive. I doubt I'd made it out myself if not for my friend here. Well, you almost... I need to get mm. back to Solitude and let them know what's happened. I thought you could help us out. Food, supplies, a place to stay. Uh, Solitude's a long way from here. Any friend of Hadvar's is a friend of mine. I'm glad to help however I can. Ah, oh, thank you. Like I said, I'm glad to help in any way I can. Okay. But I need your help. We need your help. Okay. Oh, right. Thank you. Uh, my, I'm going to take this stuff because I haven't really got much and I don't want to be cavorting as a legionnaire. So, I am going to take all of this. It's uh, quite helpful. I appreciate your generosity. There's a dragon on the loose. Riverwood is defenseless. We need to get word to Jarl Balgraf in Whiterun to send whatever soldiers he can. If you'll do that for me, I'll be in your debt. Certainly. Now, you see, my character, of course, would be uh, very... He wouldn't really... I don't think he'd want to get in too much involved with, you know, the... Uh, with these affairs, but at the same time, I suppose he knows of his uh, the organization's history, a certain amount about the, the history of the blades and its involvement with dragons, and I suppose, as a servant of the Empire, he would feel duty-bound to help out whoever he could. That's my logic, and I think that would apply to any half-decent character. So, uh, since he's unfamiliar to Skyrim, how do I get to Whiteron from here? Cross the river and then head north. You'll see it just past the falls. Wonderful. When you get to Whiterun, just keep going up. When you get to the top of the hill, you're at Dragon's Reach, the Jarl's Palace. I think, I'm pretty sure George R. R. Martin might have something to say about that. Uh, can you tell me anything about the Jarl? What sort of a man is he? Temperament? Jarl Balgraf? He rules Whiterun Hold. A good man, perhaps a bit overcautious, but these are dangerous times. So far, he's managed to stay out of the war. Franco, I'm then, is it? it Wonderful. Fast, and, uh, which side does he favor? He's not a rebel, is he? I don't think he likes either Ulfric or Elisif much. Who can blame him? But I've no doubt he'll prove loyal to the Empire in the end. He 
is no traitor. Good. And uh, what about you then? Do you have any political leanings? Of course. Skyrim has always been part of the Empire. That doesn't mean I support everything the Empire's been doing lately. But Nords have never been fair weather friends. Well, fair haired friends, maybe. And uh, who's Elisif, exactly? Ah, I forget you're new to Skyrim. Jarl Elisif, I should say. Although only because she was married to Jarl Torig when he was murdered. <laughs> Ulfric murdered Torig, you know. Walked right into his palace in solitude and killed him. Shouted him to death. If you believe the Wait, stories. Wait, hang on. Shouted him That's to what death? Started this whole war. Okay. The Empire couldn't ignore that. Once the Jarls start killing each other, we're back to the bad old days. Now, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm just going to, I have to interject here. I do find this uh, quite interesting. You find that you are talking about a society that is largely medieval, and is still using titles that uh, one would associate with the Dark Ages. Say, Jarl, for example. If you look at, say, Shakespeare. If you look at um, Shakespeare, for example, you've got Macbeth, they're all referred to as uh, the... The dukes and the counts, they're referred to as thanes. Same as in Macbeth. And at the end of Macbeth, all the thanes of Scotland are, prom are you know, in accordance with, uh, suppose, feudal law, and at the time, as it, were, as it was at the time, English law, uh, they became dukes, counts, and the like. Dukes and counts, the same way it is in Cyrodiil. I think it's interesting in this that Jarls, and Thanes are still the rulers of the land. You know, Skyrim has yet to adapt the tight you know, the, the system whereby counts and would be the title of the day. And yet it still refers right, to the bad old days Daddy, and the dark ages. Like oh, sorry. Hush, child. Don't pester your cousin. Uh, uh, Take what you need, my friend. Within reason, of course. Okay, and what can you tell okay, and on the topic, what do you think about all this war? People are rightly stirred up about the damn Talmor being allowed to roam around arresting people. Just for worshipping Talos. <laughs> but was it worth tearing Skyrim apart and maybe destroying the Empire? No. Ulfric will have a lot to answer for in the end. Nords have always supported the Empire. Nords the Empire built the Empire, depending on who you ask. And the Thalmor, well, I think I'd know this. I would know this, but I'm gonna ask it any- well, I suppose I'd know this anyway. The Thalmor are elven sup- I'm not gonna ask it because my character would know. Basically, the Thalmor were elven supremacists. And the very first, I think, uh, was it Sept- was it, um... I can't remember, was it the first Septim Emperor? Or- no, 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 no. One of the first emperors of Tamriel, or was- I think his name was Raymond Cyrodiil. Was it him, Raymond Cyrodiil? And I believe that was Talos. Talos, anyway, was one of the first emperors. Uh, one of the first emperors. And it just so happened that uh, Talos uh, was, um, well, he was so powerful that he ended up becoming a god, despite being mortal. In spite of being mortal. And I think, as far as I know, the Thalmor resented the fact that everybody in Tamriel worshipped Talos as a god. And they resented it because he was human. Oh god, can I... Oh, thank you, I can't get up. Uh, come back here, no, no. Right. Reason walking around with an unsheathed weapon? I'm not. Did you really see a dragon? Yeah, put it away. Okay, I'm not going to stay here because I'd feel quite bad about it. So I'm actually going to go into Skyrim itself. Uh, I'm not going to stay here. Because the, the matter is quite urgent, I am going to... Holy God, why is it so fucking dark?